Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys and this is a translation of a message that I received. The translation reads like this. Hello my brother, how are you? Can you please post my story is hidden identity? My brother, my story goes on like this. I used to date this other man. So this man, he was staying in Bumalang and I was staying here in Houteng and I was working here. So me and him we made on Facebook then we started dating and this guy always wanted me to visit him for a sleepover but at that time I was not yet ready to be someone's wife but finally since I was in love with him I then managed to go and see him there in Mpumalang it then happened that there was this other man he was driving a very beautiful car when this man stopped and he said that he wanted to pick me up I never even suspected that this guy he was a foreigner so I got into the car and as he was driving he said that he wanted my phone numbers i gave him my phone numbers whilst i was going to visit my boyfriend there in in pumalang that man he was speaking with me using text messages and each and every time that he would send me a text message i'll just read it and i'll just delete his calls i had blocked because i didn't want him to mess things up for my boyfriend and at that time i had not yet made a choice if i wanted to get married to the guy that was staying there in Pumalang or if I wanted to try out a new relationship with this man who was a foreigner and who had lots of money. At that time, I didn't know if I wanted to get married to my boyfriend who was from Pumalang or if I wanted to get married to the man who had offered me a lift and who was driving a very good car who had loads of money. So I was still in the decision making. It then happened that my boyfriend, the one who was in Pumalang, he then saw some text messages and he was really heartbroken that I had been cheating on him and I saw that this was the end of my relationship. When I returned back to Houteng, that man that was rich also, he then dumped me and I didn't know what to do anymore. So I then started returning back to my guy who was there in Pumalanga province and this was after I had visited this other lady who was also into making charms and everything. When I went to her, I told her my story. She then said that the thing that I'm going to give you, I want you to go with them to Mpumalanga. But when I went there to Mpumalanga, my brother, I then saw that this boyfriend of mine, he had already started dating another woman and I was really heartbroken. I then returned back to work and I went back to that woman who had assisted me and I told her everything that had happened whilst I was there in Pumalang because when I had arrived he then said that I have already moved on with my life and I feel so sorry for you because I cannot kick you out because it was late there was no way I was going to get a taxi to return me back to Houteng since it was very late he then said what you are going to do is that I will give you some blankets and you will be sleeping on the floor he then slept with his new girlfriend on the bed and if it was not for the and if it was not for his new girlfriend, he even wanted to make love on that night to his girlfriend whilst I was sleeping on the floor. And it was really painful because I had fallen pregnant for him and he had said that no, this child that you are carrying it is not my child because i found out that you are cheating on me so i was really stuck i didn't know what to do with the pregnancy that i was carrying but i knew that this pregnancy that i was carrying it was for him because that other guy that i was dating the rich one me and him we were using protection and i only had two boyfriends and that boyfriend of mine was from pumalang he was the one that i was sleeping with not using any protection at all I then returned back to that lady who had tried to give me some love potions so that my boyfriend can return back to me. So when my boyfriend had told me that he didn't love me, what had happened is that I had stolen one of his t-shirts and early in the morning before they could suspect anything, I woke up and I told him that 
I was ready to go and I left them and he never suspected that I had stolen one of his t-shirt. I then returned back to Houting with his t-shirt. When I returned back to Houting with that t-shirt, I then visited that lady who had assisted me and when she saw that I had my boyfriend's t-shirt, he said, you are very clever. You are very clever because we need this t-shirt so as to perform all of the rituals. Then that lady said that there was something that she wanted me to do on that t-shirt. She asked me if I was able to do it. I said, anything is possible. I can do it. She then said that I want you to remove your clothes. And after you have removed your clothes, I want you to do some pull on top of your boyfriend's t-shirt and this was really embarrassing for me because this was like the first time for me to go to the loo to do pool whilst there was someone that was watching me but anyway she said that this was part of the ritual so i removed my clothes and i then squatted whilst i was doing pool on top of that t-shirt after i was done she then said that i want you to fold it up and put it in a plastic and that is what i did and that is what i did she said that I was supposed to go back with the t-shirt with the pool that was inside that t-shirt and she said I want you to keep it inside your room until it had dried up so that we can start using it. I then returned back home with that t-shirt that had my pool inside of it. My brother each and every time that I would go to work when I would come back the whole room would be smelling like it was just something else. After the pool had dried I then returned back to that woman. She then touched it and she saw that indeed it was dry she said that we had to turn my poo into powder so we started grinding and grinding until everything was now powder she gave me some and she said that this one i want you to bath with it she then mixed some of the powdered poo with water and she said this i want you to drink here then some of it we then poured it on top of the t-shirt after that, she then gave me four needles and she said, do you have any of his photographs? I said, yes, I have a photograph. But the problem with this photograph is that the way that we were standing, you could not see him completely because he was hugging me as he was standing on at my back. Back in those days, we used to keep these physical photographs. She said, I want a photograph whereby we can see his body completely. So that picture that I had of my ex-boyfriend it was not going to work for that ritual that was when i remembered that at game back in those days the game shop they used to keep these other machines whereby you will go to that machine then you will just send some pictures to that machine then it will print out some pictures for you i rushed to the game shop before it had closed i then rushed to the game store and i went to that machine which printed photographs from your phone and i started printing out some photos that I had of my ex-boyfriend after I had gotten a good photo as per the instruction of that woman who was assisting me I quickly returned back to her house and after I had returned then she taught me how to use those four needles that she had given me so I was supposed to create sort of like a triangle with the three needles then the last needle what I had to do I had to pin that needle at the area where his private parts is so that is what i did i took that fourth needle and i pinned it at the place where the private part is and after that that was when she said that we need to go and find a spot whereby we can hide these things and no one should ever see these things ever again we then started walking out of the location until we had entered into this other bush area but the problem with that bush area that we had gone to it was sort of like it didn't have any trees or anything we kept on walking and walking until we had gone deep into the bushes and before we had gone deep into the bushes we had found this other place whereby termites were building an anthill so she said this is a very good spot for us to hide the t-shirt and everything but the only problem is that she then saw that the area it seemed as if a lot of people they were walking past through that termite hill that was being built by the termites so we went even further into the bushes until we had found another spot where termites were still building their termite hill and she said this is the perfect spot 
we then laid that t-shirt that had some of the powdered poo she said that by us placing the t-shirt and the photograph on top of that termite hill it meant that the oath that i was about to do it was going to remain forever so the oath that i did my brother was that this man my ex-boyfriend was staying in pumalang if he was not going to come back to me so that he can be with me since i had pinned that needle at the area where his private part is then it meant that his private part will never work his men would will never work he will start to suffer from erectile dysfunction and the only cure for his erectile dysfunction is when he would come to me and ask for forgiveness so that we can get married to each other again then the erectile dysfunction will simply disappear we then returned back home and i was really happy i even paid that woman extra money because of the good job that she had done when i was at work one day that was when that guy called me and he said that he was facing so many challenges in his life but even though he loved me but he was afraid that if you could get married to me it was going to treat me bad because each and every time he would remember that i had cheated on him and because he loved me he was finding it very difficult for him to forgive me i then said so why are you calling me in the first place so when he called me he said that he was facing a problem whereby he was confused his manhood is not working anymore and he was suffering from erectile dysfunction so my brother i then said so if you do not want to get in a relationship with me again why are you even telling me all of your problems and from there on i started to live my own life until i found another guy who was better than that guy that i was dating there in pumalang and after that i just deleted my ex-boyfriend's number that one was from pumalang and i just continued with my life so the oath my brother that i said was that the pregnancy that i was caring for him the child that i had the one that he had refused and said that it was not his child and since he had refused to take care of that pregnancy it meant that in his life he was never going to make another woman fall pregnant and as for his manhood if he was not going to get married to me then it meant that his manhood will never even work even if he get any kind of medication simply because we went and we buried his t-shirt and his photograph with the needles pinned on top of his manhood no one will ever be able to cure him so my brother i never spoke with him and i never looked for him and so since that time that i spoke with him and when he told me that his manhood is no longer working i don't know if he was able to get a cure and i don't know if he was able to have a child but from what that lady that assisted me told me she said that no matter what you will never be able to have a child in this world dear listeners right there was a narration of a long message that was sent to me hoping that you were able to understand that confession